Welcome to a special presentation of Sellout Crowd, Conversations with Coach. I'm Bob Stoops. I'm taking time to talk with friends and colleagues in the sports world to get caught up and share stories. Today, right now, I'm joined by Cliff Kingsbury. Appreciate you joining us, Cliff. Uh, Cliff, of course, uh, most recently uh, head coach at the, uh, the Arizona Cardinals from 2019 to 22. Texas Tech head coach from 2013 to 2018. I had to deal with some tough games in that time. And uh, currently an assistant working with USC and uh, Lincoln Riley working uh, senior uh, assistant off the field and working with quarterbacks. I can't imagine that quarterback room. We got Cliff Kingsbury and Lincoln Riley's tutoring up the Heisman Trophy winner. Are you kidding me? Oh, it's it's been awesome, Caleb. Uh, you got to spend some time around him uh, during that bowl, you know, prep yeah. and, and game, and just his joy for the game, his competitive spirit, and, and the talent level is unbelievable. I mean, I yeah. obviously have been around Patrick, and and he's you know eerily similar in some ways. The ability to extend plays and off platform throws, and and just the way they they both play the game is is pretty scary. And uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Lincoln's been great. Phenomenal. You, you've seen him work, but in that yep. quarterback room treats the fifth string walk on just like he does the Heisman trophy winner. And, and um, that's kind of the ultimate compliment I can give a coach. So I'm, I'm looking at all the quarterbacks, Cliff, you've, uh, you've worked with. I'm going to start with Case Keenum. And then we got Johnny football. We got Johnny Manziel, Baker Mayfield, Patrick Mahomes, Kyler Murray, and 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 now Caleb Williams, <laughs> that's a that's a ridiculous <laughs> pool of talent that you've had a chance to work with. Yeah, talk is, a little yeah. bit been, about been, all of them. I've yeah. been really blessed, Coach, um, to be around that type of not only player but person. And, and you've been around a few of them as well on that list. And just the competitive spirit is really um, the most common denominator. I'd say is that they all want to be perfect. They all want to be great on every play. And as a coach, you know, that's, that's what you dream of working with a player like that. So I've, you know, had the ride of a lifetime getting to be around some of those guys. And uh, this year has been really fun to continue with Caleb and, and be around Lincoln. That's awesome. Well, and we're, we, we just hung up a little bit ago with Hal Mummy talking about Mike Leach and your, your former coach, uh, coach Leach gets there when you're at Texas tech, you and first year you were with spike at Dykes, correct? Yes, sir. And then Mike Leach comes in, and let me read some of this. You, you, uh, at the time when you left Tech, you held thirty-nine uh, school records. You had thirteen Big Twelve records, seven NCAA records, and uh, in large part your talent. But also talk about working with our buddy, who now so so we everyone knows uh, Cliff. Uh, this weekend uh, at Texas Tech is being honored in the Ring of Honor at Texas Tech, as is Mike Leach, your former coach, is going in as the Ring of Honor. After all the turmoil of him leaving Tech, fortunately the administration realizes how important he was to Tech. And I know Sharon, Mike's wife, and children are going to be there. Uh, so I'm, 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 I, I was planning on being there, and I had a function at my home here that I auctioned off, not knowing this was going to be the date for, for you and Mike. But uh, talk about playing for Mike and what an honor it is to be inducted into the Ring of Honor there at Tech. Yeah, it's a huge honor, and, and mostly because I get to go in with him. You know, he, he meant so yeah. much to me and my career, and, and I wouldn't be in this this seat right now or had any of the opportunities that I got with without him. He he believed in me before I even believed in myself, and you, you got to work with him and see that belief that he would instill in players and, you know, his whole, I don't care if they know the play, <laughs> what's coming, if you run it the right way, they can't cover it. And you, you started to believe that, and you started to play that way. And the success he had at places that normally didn't, win at the level that he won at was just unprecedented and his impact on the game is is you know so far reaching i think as time goes on and you know this coach he was a little bit quirky i would say so i don't think a he's gotten bit. the credit i don't think he's gotten the credit he deserves yet for how much he impacted the game of football but uh you look at the heisman trophy winner last year coached by lincoln riley who learned you know grew up under coach Leach and then the Super yep. Bowl you got Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts both who are coached by guys in college that you know played for coach Leach so it's everywhere you know Sonny Dykes going to the national championship you know Mike gave him his first job so his impact is far-reaching in the game and I think as time goes on people are going to realize just how great his impact was. 
totally. The air raid, he made it popular. All the assistant coaches he put out to head jobs, on and on. Now, playing quarterback for him, I remember him destroying Josh Heupel for coming off the field and saying he read this coverage. He did <laughs> not want you looking at coverage. He no. said, and then Coach Spurrier, yeah. young Steve Jr., is in the box saying, he goes, Mike, Coach Leach, it's, it's, it's two man. And Mike goes, what the bleep is two man? He goes, I don't want to. He got, he got so mad at Hypo for reading coverages. Yeah. Did you ever get that lecture? Oh, there's no doubt. It was, it was <laughs> going to be one, two, three, four, five. That's all he wanted you to see. And he didn't want you to give the defense too much credit because, yeah, in theory, they should take that go route away. Yep. But maybe they don't, you know. And that always made sense to me. And I've structured a lot of my reads and a lot of my progressions based on that because I'm like, yeah, I get that they shouldn't take it away. But but they're not always going to get where they should be. And they, they may bust the coverage, too. Um, and so that was the way he, he coached. And even the personnel was like, who are we playing this week? He'd be like, this is the black team or this is the green team. This is the red team. Like He didn't want you to see them as anything other than X's and O's that you were going to attack. And if you did your job at a high level, it didn't matter. They weren't going to be able to stop you. Agreed. He didn't care about who was on the other side, what number they were. Not if at he's, all. he, I remember him. If he's he's open, number one read, throw it to him. If he's not open, <laughs> throw it to two. If he's not just like you said, if he's not open, throw it to three. That's Don't look it. at the defense. Just look at who's open and who isn't. That's it. And the thing is, is you'd watch the film post practice. You probably saw this, and he thought everybody was open. I swear to God, five guys would be covered, and he'd be like okay he's probably a touchdown number two is definitely a touchdown number three maybe a touchdown a little tight number four is a touchdown five you throw it here so <laughs> let's work on that but it was just this undying belief that if you did it right everybody's open on every play and they weren't gonna be able to stop you and er and everybody would have had a touchdown that's what, that's yeah, what there's no thought. doubt now were you when we went there in 99 spike dyke's last game were you the starter? It seems like there was someone I was. else. I was. You were. That was my first start ever, and it was the only time I beat you. I think I'm like one in <laughs> ten <laughs> against you coaching and playing. No. But we got that one, and as I recall, y'all had to take a bus home. So which that counts for about three victories, I think. But, yeah, that was Spike's last game. We were, we were all, you know, hair on fire to try and win yeah. one for him. Um, and then that, yeah. I think that loss kind of propelled y'all into the national championship because I think you got to really coach hard off it in the offseason, and uh, the we next did. year y'all won it all. Well, we would have had a little bit more of a special year had we won that game, and I knew it was Spike's last game. And yeah, and you guys played well. I remember you we you playing well, and uh, just all of it. And then after the game, I'm slumped down in my locker. I was so mad. And uh, Matt comes up, McMillan. You know Matt. Uh, yeah, he's been our administrative assistant all these years and top assistant in the in the uh, office, and he. He says, well, I got more bad news. I said, what's that? <laughs> he goes, the plane isn't coming. I go, well, how long till the next one? He goes, there isn't another one. <laughs> so he said, he said, we're going to be on a bus. And he goes, and not a good bus. It's a school bus. <laughs> uh, said, that's, that's, a, that's a worse nightmare for a coach now. <laughs> oh, and I said, you know what? I kind of smiled. I said, that's what we bleep and deserve. I said, heck with it. I said, well, uh, kids go home. It took us like eight hours. Hey, we stop at a rest stop on the way home so the guys could use the restroom and, and get something to eat or drink. You know, we left three, four guys behind when we left to pull the bus. <laughs> and some fans picked them up on the way home. They jumped in the car with some fans to get home. One of those <laughs> so, days, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> A couple Seriously. more things, Cliff. Um, out of right out of uh, college, you're with the 2003 Super Bowl uh, Patriots championship, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I got Talk drafted. Talk about that experience right out of college, and here you are in the Super Bowl, and you guys win it. Yeah, I thought it was easy. You know, <laughs> you get up there and you go to the Super Bowl that first year, and you got Tom yeah. Brady and Bill Belichick and all these <laughs> Hall of Fame players on the Patriots. So, uh, incredible experience. I never thought I was going to get into coaching at that point, but looking back, you know, to learn under Bill in that way um, was was incredible. Just his level of preparation each and every week, no stone unturned approach on every level um, was just an incredible experience for me, especially, you know, the fact that I went on to be a coach. But um, yeah. I thought I worked hard. I really did until I got there and saw what Tom Brady did on a daily basis. And I'm like, uh, I don't yeah. know if I'm, I'm going to be able to catch this cat now. It was you could tell right away that. Every waking second he had, it was devoted to being the best quarterback of all time. 
Yeah, I imagine you still have a relationship with him. I do. Yeah, he, he's awesome. He's one of those guys. You, if you ever need anything, he's there, and um, yeah. you know, still That's inspiring. You watch. I just just did a podcast and I was watching some of the clips and when he gets revved up and starts talking, I still get fired up. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. Talk about difference from you leave tech and then, and then you go to the Cardinals. Talk about that transition and the difference from college ball to pro ball, how extreme it is. Yeah. The the biggest deal is just um, when you get to the pros, there's all the academic portion, the making sure they're eating the right meals and making sure they're, not missing lifts, all these things you know about the off the field issues, those are just gone. And I know you had that experience this year with pro football. Um, it's just football all day long and that's all you're focused on. And you're dealing with guys that if they do slip up or, or they're not giving it all, they just won't be there. You, you, there's no babysitting. <laughs> and I think that's, that's a big part of it. And then just the recruiting aspect of it. College coaches do at least twice as much work as pro coaches. Um, in season, it's going to be a grind no matter what, but the off season schedule for college coaches is insane compared to NFL guys. Cause you're just never away from it. As you know, you yeah. always got to have your phone on. You always got to be communicating and it's just, uh, it's a full-time job. I found relating with the older players, Really, I mean, it's fun re- relating to college guys. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but it's just so much easier with guys that are that are older, have families, that are grown men. It's just so simple. I I, I found. Oh, no doubt. They they want to know what to do, how to do it at a high level, and if you can show that you're competent, you know, in their <clears throat> area of expertise, and that you're authentic and and actually care about them more than football. You know, there, there's a great buy-in from that professional player. Let's lastly, we're real uh, just to let you go, Cliff. But uh, let's talk about that game with Mahomes and Mayfield. What the <laughs> heck year was that? That was uh, 15 or 16? I think it was. I'm, I'm it was, terrible about years. Yeah, I think it was 15. Yeah, Joe yeah. Mixon and y'all had oh. Westbrook. Yeah. But, Joe- I mean, uh, we thought we had Mahomes down and he's so big and <laughs> thick, he'd squirrel his way out of it. And oh. just both of the two of them. Uh, talk about you on the other side. I'm going to tell you what I told Lincoln. With four minutes to go in the game, we get the ball back. We're ahead of touchdown or ahead, whatever, three points or touchdown, maybe uh, three and a half, four. And Lincoln yeah. asked me, he and I on the sidelines, he says, Coach, do you think I ought to try and burn some clock? And I didn't hesitate. I said, Lincoln, I said, don't change the damn thing you've been doing. I said, because we got to score. I said, this isn't over. And he uh, as you know, Lincoln, well, he smiled at me. Oh, he, goes, no he goes, I got you. I go, <laughs> and when we scored. Oh, I <laughs> so, know. And, no, uh, no. That was that was a lot of really, really great players making insane plays. Oh. I remember that sideline catch. Joe Mixon catches with one hand yeah. full stride and just outruns everybody. I think he had six touchdowns. Baker had seven thrown. I mean, it was unbelievable. Um, but and you're, one you of the guys wildest, had a million of them. Oh, one of the wildest. I mean, and then we yeah. ended up both teams had the exact – same amount of yards at the end of the game. It was just <laughs> one of the epic shootouts of all time. And to no see it with those two guys, you know, Baker coming back to Texas Tech and then Pat, it was it was special. That's one I'll always remember the rest of my life. Yeah, it was special. And I, I got to see people then the next few years here and the, with the Chiefs and seeing what Mahomes can do. I said, hey, don't <laughs> yeah, tell no me. Doubt. I saw it firsthand. <laughs> no, no <laughs> so, doubt. Yeah, no I'm, doubt. I'm aware of what he can do. Well, Cliff, you're, you're nice to come on and uh, listen. Tell everybody out there, um, I had the utmost respect for you as a head coach and uh, and quarterback and play caller and everything you did. You did it well and as a player. And uh, so you, you, you're a young guy, so you still got a lot more big time uh, games coming to you. I, I got, again, great respect for you. Well, I appreciate it, Coach. And I've always been a huge fan. And, you, you know, you do it at the highest level it's ever been done at. And everybody that's ever worked for you, I know a bunch of them, they always rave about the type of person you are, even more so the coach. And, and that says everything you need to know. Well, I appreciate it, Cliff. Well, all the best to you. Tell the guys uh, there at SC hello for me. And, uh, and uh, hey, best of luck moving forward, okay? Appreciate Thank it, Coach. You. Take care. Bye now. That wraps up this installment of Conversations with Coach. Follow and subscribe to this channel and visit selloutcrowd.com to find out about upcoming programs.